Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the Orc Commando from Kill Team Octarius. I've chose the Orc Knob from the Orc Commandos to paint in this video because I think he'll be a great example. He's got a great pose, and also all the techniques we use to paint him, you can use on all the other Orc Commandos. And this is the finished piece we're looking for, so we're looking for a nice, good tabletop ready standard with mostly contrast paints. The techniques I'll be using are super easy and really it's paint by numbers so I think if as long as you're happy to spend an hour or two on one model then pretty much anybody will be able to do this. I use the Kill Team Octavia supplement book as my reference and if you flick through the book to pages 34, 35 and 36 you can see some great examples and here's the commando knob that I used as my reference for all the colours and everything and they're all on there, loads of great images high quality detail pictures that you can use as your reference. And the paints I'll be using, I'll put a list of all of them in the description below and also some links where you can save 20% off the retail price. Okay, let's get started. So here he is all primed and I use the Citadel Colour Wraithbone Spray and this comes in this 400ml spray can so you can get loads of models out of this and really important to follow those instructions on the back for best results. And the first paint I used once that was completely dried was Contrast Plague Bearer Flesh, and this is going to go over all the Orc Flesh that you can see on the model. And I got this recipe from the Painting Coats, so another shout out to him, great recipe. Basically it's Plague Bearer Flesh, and then we put a, a shade over it later on, a green shade, which you'll see as we go through the video. So here, I'm starting and ending my brush strokes where I want most of that paint to build up. It's quite a thin coat, so not putting a lot on, and make sure you kind of go around all the different sections here. From the top down you can see the neck, and then we're doing the stomach here in between those belts as well, being quite careful. We can always tidy up if we make a mistake, but certainly at this stage. And then on that arm, really working it into those recesses, and this is going to give us a nice base. When we add that shade later, you'll get this coming through almost like a highlight. Then I took Lead Belcher, the base paint, and now I'm going to block in all the sections of the model that are metal. Now, it's probably best to do this lead belcher stage first, but I like to start an orc with some green, just so it starts to bring him to life, and I just enjoy doing it that way. But um, if you want to be like more cautious in case you make a mistake and, and have to tidy up that green, then I would suggest doing this lead belcher first. But here we go, I'm just blocking in every part of the model, again using those pictures as my reference to see which parts are metal, which are not. And whether this is going to be gold or silver, I'm starting it all with a lead belcher. Then we'll use some contrast paints later to bring out all the different colours of the metal as well. So that's a really great technique that I think works really well with contrast paints, using lead belcher as a base, and then the colours coming from those different contrasts. And then here, just being super careful now, doing those dog tags. And then I took a base wraith bone, and this is where I just went round and touched up any mistakes. So the lead belcher is quite a lot of metal work. Some of it's quite fiddly, so you're going to make a mistake. But it's really important just to tidy it up, bring it back down to that wraith bone so it matches the primed colour. And then that's going to make it really neat as we go through the next stages using our contrast paints. Our next paint is a contrast black templar. Make sure that lead belch is completely dry before you start painting over it. And then I'm going to use this uh, black paint now to go over all the boots here. And so I'm just avoiding that metal, trying to be really careful and giving one nice coat all over. And then we're only going to give one coat of this contrast paint. That's all we need. And the same with the lead belch, it was just one coat. And I'm just pushing it around again, starting and ending my brush strokes where I want most of that paint to build up. And when I get to areas like this, I'm just making sure there's a little bit less paint on the brush. So you don't want too much coming off. Certainly don't swamp it or flood it with paint. You really don't need to do that with contrast paints. And so I'm almost treating it like a kind of um, really uh, like thick felt tip pen. So it's coming off in that quantity. But some paints you need to put a little bit more on, some a little bit less, and you'll just get used to that as you work with the contrast paints. But this black's really great, nice dark colour obviously, but you're going to get some of that highlight coming through as it settles in the recesses and just works its way off those raised areas a little bit. So keeping on going now, I'm looking at the different sections again using that reference, and then I'm picking out the bits that are like black metal almost, and just going over that. Here, I've got hardly any paint on my brush now, really thin, and I'm also not going right up to the edge, so it's not really neat, and that fits in with the style of all this on the claw there. And again there, just not too much on the, on the, on the brush. Here, hardly any at all. You can see I'm really having a job to get it off 
and on there, and that's going to add to the scruffy orc look. Next is Contrast Basilicanum Grey, and this is going to go over this little bit of pipe here. You might need a little bit more paint on areas like this because the surface area of something like this coiled pipe is quite large, so you need a bit more paint and just spread it around. And then we're going to paint the rucksack in this nice grey colour too. And this just breaks, you could do it black, but I just want to break it up a bit so that there's lots of different colours going on. And then just take your time, pick out that colour in the, in the rucksack, block it all out, make sure it goes right into the little holes that are in the rucksack straps. And then we'll move on to the contrast skeleton horde paint. And this is going to go on the roll mat that we can see at the bottom of the rucksack and also on part of the gun. So with this paint, you can put a little bit more on. So here I've got quite a lot on my brush as I'm pushing it into those recesses and also on this binding because this paint dries quite opaque. So we want a decent amount of this on there. Then I take some contrast Creed Camo and this is going to be the first paint we put on this waistcoat that he's wearing. And now in the picture, it's kind of an olive green. So I'm going to use this Creed Camo with an Agrax Earthshade over the top of it later on. And that's going to get us quite close to the picture but you really use any green you like here i think coming away from a green against that green skin and making it a little bit olive works really nicely with this guy so there's lots of different greens going on and that's why with the next one we've got dark angels green and basilicanum gray and i'm going to mix two parts basilicanum gray with one part uh, that green and then i'll just use a bit of blue tack i've got this old bottle top or tub top and i just use my brush take the paint out and kind of just guesstimate two parts basilicanum grey to one green, mix them together with the brush, little test, and then that's a nice colour that I'm really happy with. And so this is going to be a dark greyish green. And again, it's just going to break up that really solid green colours because we've got three going on here with the skin, the waistcoat and these trousers. Then I took some contrast Blood Angels red and started to pick out all the areas on the model that are painted in red, like these grenades. There's some on the gun. There's some on this claw here, so it's got like a little piston going on. So I'm just giving that a nice coat of the red. And we want that lead belt to come through a little bit. So we do know that this is metal and that the paint's kind of wearing away a little bit. And here on the pistol as well, putting that all around. I'm avoiding the logo, but it doesn't matter if I go over it because we're gonna paint it white with a base paint later on anyway. And then at the back here, there's this large metal object that's connected to the claw. This is like a power pack, I guess, some kind of battery. And also, I wanted to paint some of these cables. I thought the wires, as you can see them coming through, would look really cool. And then I got a Contrast Ultramarines brew, uh, blue, and then continued painting those cables in that nice blue colour as well. So that's going to really add a nice touch to the model, I think. So it's worth taking the time to do this. Also on the little screen here, I put a little blob on that left-hand side and then wipe the paint off my brush and thin it out a little bit. Then I took some Yandan yellow and continue that idea of painting those wires inside that thick cable. Also one of the buttons on the back of the monitor. And it's time for some Agoras dunes and this is going to give us a really nice gold effect. So if we paint over the lead belcher with this, this gives us a really nice gold. It's not too bright, nice and deep colour and it works really nicely on all these little rounds you can see in there. And on this little canister at the back really nice effect from these colors and then also just on the spikes of these crampons as well i'm just going to give them a little coat and he's got a little buckle on the straps on the front so that's going to be gold as well and just having this dotted around really breaks it up then i took some contrast gilliman flesh and this is going to go on some other metal areas to make it look a bit more bronzy not so much rusty but just an old worn out metal look and i think this is a really nice technique too then it's time to go to some shade with a bale tan green and this is going to continue that skin effect that I talked about earlier. And so I'm not putting a lot of shade on here. I'm going quite thin. And so you can see I'm certainly not flooding it. I'm just really spreading it around. So it's a nice even coat all across all the areas we painted with that uh, plague bearer flesh earlier on. So I'll let this part play out a little bit just so you can see exactly how much is going on. The other bits I went through quite quick but we'll just slow it down again now, just so you can see how the paint goes on the face, especially. You see, I'm just trying to do downward strokes, letting the texture of the model take that paint off my brush and then trying to start and end the brush strokes against that texture to really work it into the shade. In the tips of the ears, I don't put so much on, but I try and get it to pool in those recesses. Then I took some Null Noil shade, and this is gonna go on all the silver parts of the model. So any silver metal is gonna get a nice coat of this Null Noil, and quite generous 
a little bit more of this shade than I did with the green shade and then, then just putting it on again use the texture of the model to get it off your brush and make sure it's got a nice even coat all over start and end your brush strokes if you want more of that paint to go in certain places and I also covered some over those bindings of the gun make them look a bit greasy went over that red too that's going to add to a little aged effect make it look a bit more gunky and, and as if it's been used all over the claw and then we're working our way through to those cables those wires we can see as well then I took some Terradon turquoise great color this is and this is perfect to give this guy a manicure so I'm just picking out those fingernails and you only see them on one hand because of that crazy claw he's got on the other so just take your time here this is where you don't really want to make any mistakes then it's time for some Corax white I'm just gonna put one coat of this over the areas like this little skull logo on one side of the gun and then we've also got the belt here the belt buckle and then on the back you'll also see there's a little like lightning strike on that battery pack so that's gonna get a coat too and also the gun has got another side with another logo on it so we'll paint that too and then while I had the paint out I just painted that white fang and, uh, and that's gonna allow us to go over it later with another color then I took some Agrax Earthshade and this is gonna go all over the waistcoat now this is gonna give it more of an olive green look and hopefully take away from the two colors clashing so I don't want that skin color to clash with the green of the waistcoat and so this is gonna deepen those shadows a little bit but also just change the color ever so slightly and you could do two coats of this if you wanted to but you can see on the back of the model there there's all different colors painted on the base and that's how I kind of test the different color schemes out and what they'll look like on the wraith bone and then while I've got the Agrax Earthshade I'm going over all the other areas that haven't had a shade yet then I took some contrast Volupus pink I love this color it's really cool and then this is going to go over this area where he's got these scars and the uh, claw is like attached to his arm where it's really sore and gross looking so getting that in there just to make it look like really standing out and so just going along that really carefully then i took some skeleton horde contrast and just painted that tooth or we'll like give it a little paint there and also in the inside it wouldn't hurt as well but it's that one we want to stand out then i took some layer storm host silver very vegan makeup brush with some nice soft bristles and i'm going to work that paint into my bristles and then into the kitchen towel work off as much paint as I can and then we'll do some dry brushing and this is going to bring all that metallic that we've done to life anytime you dry brush like this it's always good to just be a bit careful at first you don't know exactly how much paint is going to come off so I'm being super careful because you could literally ruin everything you've done in this stage so I'm going really careful and then when I'm confident that there's not too much paint coming off the brush I can be a bit more rougher I can really pick out those angular bits those raised areas and give them a nice hit of this highlight and this really brings the metallic work to life I didn't do this on the death Gore Cree but I figured with this one it needed it and so I think it looks a lot better on the grenades too. be careful you don't get it on that green that we spent all that time on little tiny bit at the bottom of the handle there and the gun we can go over all the red as well because that's metal so if that's got a little silver highlight that's fine and then tiny tiny bit on the dog tags here that he's wearing which is a really nice touch I think for the model then I took some Agris Dunes and this is going to be that gold look again but here I'm going to use it on the little piece of terrain that he's standing on and this is where I'm really putting a lot of paint on now I'm flooding this almost with paint there's a lot of surface area to cover and I really want it to be dark in those recesses so I've been really generous here but that's the only time really and then taking some dry paint some riser rust this awful looking brush really old brush I just dip it in there and then I work the paint off onto some kitchen towel and then get it to a point where I can just stipple on a little bit of um, like rust here and there and you can see I'm really careful I don't want this to be orange I just want it to be really subtle and just change up the kind of color of this a little bit make it look old and rusty just like an orc would have and then just going over those areas and then that highlight we did is really going to catch this orange and make it work really well and there we go here's our orc commando all painted to a good tabletop ready standard with mostly contrast paint a few metallics and a bit of dry brushing i was really happy with how he turned out i've still got the base to do and i'll do a separate video on that but i've just left it here so you can see how it's painted and i'll put the base video up really soon and here we go I'm really happy again so this came out really nice I think the contrast paints on lead belcher always works well and a little bit of rust and highlight is a great technique to use I love all the colors 
for this whole like scheme that was included in the Octarius box set. So some great references to copy. And that orc recipe from the Peyton coach is just great for orc skin. I really love it. And I think when you combine it with some nice dark and natural colors like we've got here, I think that orc skin really stands out. So really happy, great figures. I think all the miniatures in this box set were fantastic. And um, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and seeing how you can use contrast paint to get some nice results. I've also done a video on how to paint the veteran guardsmen for the Death Corps of Krieg and loads of other videos for all the terrain, the oil pump, the ramshackle walls, those barricades, and even the measuring gauges and everything, these scrap piles. So we've got videos on the channel for everything if you want to check that out. I've also done some unboxing videos of the main game and the dice, and also some ideas on how you might like to build your kill team of commandos or Krieg. I'll put a list of all the paints used in this video in the description below, and I'll put some links there as well so you can save up to 20% on the retail price. And those links can take you to Wayland Games or Element Games, both are awesome companies where you can order online and you're going to save 20% on not just on your paints but on the products too. And Element Games have got Kill Team at the moment available for $99.99. And so not only do you save money, but you also support the channel too because I get a commission from any sales made through those links. So if you do choose to click the link and have a look, then thanks so much for that support. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that this gave you a good idea of how you might like to paint your Orc Commandos from your new Kill Team Octarius box set. And I'll be putting the video for the bases for the Orcs up on the channel tomorrow. So if you come back tomorrow, that'll be there waiting for you too. But thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. It'll be great to see you there.